Hi guys, so today I am doing my April reading wrap up and this month I actually accomplished quite a bit. I read a total of 13 different pieces of work and so this may be a little long so if you need to get a drink go ahead and do that and I will get on with starting. Oh, I also participated in three readathons and I must say my favorite part of the readathons were all of the Twitter participation. It was just amazing, all three that were hosted, the um, t hashtag TBR Takedown, um, Authorathon, and Dewey's 24-hour readathon were all great and the participation was amazing and so I highly recommend those three readathons for any of you who are wanting to do one. So the first book I finished this month was Air of Fire by Sarah J Moss. Um, I read most of this in March but I did finish it on April 1st and I gave this one four out of five stars. I have a book chat up for this for those of you who've read it and there's a non-spoiler for like the first couple of minutes if you just want to hear my general thoughts. The next book I read was Sarah J Moss, um, Queen of Shadows and I gave this one a five out of five stars. This was probably my favorite, if not my second favorite read of the month. I found it to just be absolutely wonderful and I cannot wait for Empire of Storms to come out in September. Then I picked up the um, novella Bind Up, um, The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Moss. I gave this one a three stars. I was actually quite disappointed with this. Um, I don't think you necessarily have to read it like as part of the series so if you don't I don't think you're missing very much. Out of the novellas my favorite one was The Assassin and the Red Desert. That one gave me the most Throne of Glass series feelings. Um, the other ones ranged from like okay to like very disappointing so that's just kind of my general thoughts. I also will have a review of this and a book talk of Queen of Shadows up in the next couple of days if they're not already up and um, I will link them below when they are up. Then for Authorthon I was doing um, just C.S. Lewis's books particularly the Chronicles of Narnia so that's where the next books get and the first one I read was The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, it is labeled as number two but it was the first published and I gave this a three stars only because the writing was I don't know, there's something off about the writing in this one. The story was still great. Um, it was a reread for me. I did love it and I highly recommend starting the series with this book. I feel like it's the best entry point. Although I haven't read the chronological number one, which is The Magician's Nephew, but I still think that this is the best place to start. Um, after I finish the series, I will do a series wrap up along with a like the reading order I suggest um, and yeah for those of you who are interested. The next one was Prince Caspian um, by C.S. Lewis. I love this one. I gave this a four out of five stars. This was my second favorite of the ones I've read so far. Um, highly recommend this. So if you thought the line the witch in the wardrobe was slightly off I felt like this one was much better the action the story the character development much better in this one the next one was voyage of the dawn trader this was my absolute favorite um, that I've read so far I still gave it four out of five stars I haven't given any of these books five stars but I did really really like this oh I have a full review up on my Goodreads this takes place um, I want to say it's two years, I think it's two years after um, Prince Caspian, so not very long. And um, the next one is The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis, and this one takes place several, well, in Narnia years it takes place several years after um, Voyage of the Dawn Treader. And I, this one is kind of getting bored. I don't know if it was this book in particular because I, I gave this 2.5 stars out of 5 or if it was just the fact that because I was marathoning the series I was getting a little bored. Um, I do marathon series a lot and I don't usually get that feeling but this one just drug out and out and out and so this is the least favorite I've read so far. 
the next book I picked up I got from my local library so I will put a picture of Mike right here right here and this is The Grown Up by Jillian Flynn. This is a short story. I think it's only like a hundred and something pages or maybe it's seven. I can't remember. It's like very short. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This was amazing. I didn't see the plot twist coming. The beginning was slightly slow, which is kind of why I couldn't give it 5 stars. But it was just captivating. I love the mystery about it. I, I don't want to say what it's about because I... I read it completely blind going in and that's actually how I recommend going into it but it was phenomenal um, and it was quick and easy and exactly what I needed at the time and I, I actually liked the ending surprisingly so um, yeah and the ending wasn't one of those that it's wrapped up in a neat little bow you still have like several options on how you want to see I guess the ending of the book because it was very open-ended. Okay, the next one I read was a graphic novel and it was Over Easy by Mimi Pond. Um, I read this at my local library too. The art style I really liked. It was a monochromatic watercolor in a teal. The art was um, very lifelike and I mean I love the art style. It was probably my favorite thing about the book. Um, this, I'm going to call this a graphic memoir because I, it details, I think it's five years, maybe it's, maybe it's five to ten years, um, of the author's life from the time she, like, graduates high school to when, um, it ends. Or she's like, I think she's like in her late 20s when it ends. And... At first, I really liked the story. I thought it was good. Toward the end, it just got very long. I didn't like all the drama. I didn't like all the fights. I didn't like, I guess, how it portrayed certain things. There are trigger warnings for drugs, sex. There is, like, a detailed graphic sex scene in there. Um, shows, like, bare breasts and stuff. So, if that's nudity or any of that, like, severely, like, bothers you don't read it. Oh, also alcohol, um, abusive relationships. It's pretty heavy on the drugs. So, um, yeah, any of that bothers you. It takes place in the, like, in the early 70s to 80s to, um, early 70s to early 80s. So, um, or maybe it's late 60s to late 70s. One of those, it covers most of the 70s basically is what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. It is rated pretty, like, it's like a 3 point something. I think it's like a 3.6 on Goodreads. So I guess maybe it just appeals to an audience. It's not me. Um, but, I mean, I just, it was the most disappointing read of the month for me. Then I read The Invention of Hugo Cabre by Brian Selznick and I will put a picture up here because I again I got this from the library. This for those of you who don't know is told very interestingly. There's pictures and text and I felt like the pictures in this were far better than the pictures that is in the um, Ransom Riggs Peculiar Children series. This the, the pictures here actually tell the story it's not forced it flows from text to pictures very very nicely um it's a very quick read i love the mystery it basically follows hugo um and he's essentially very early on in the book left by himself just through the various events that it will spell out in the book and following him trying to put this invention back together and i Gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I really liked it. I very much liked it toward the end. Um, the beginning and the middle were slightly slow for me. Um, I loved the world building. The character development was great. I just, like I said, it was a little bit slower than I would have liked. And I am very interested to pick up um, one of Brian Selznick's other two books that are told in similar fashions, which is Marvel's and Wonderstruck, I believe. Next, I picked up Benj by Tyler Oakley, and I 
I got this from my library too and I read the audio or listened to the audiobook of this and I picked this up because I've been watching The Amazing Race. It's one of my favorite shows. I've watched just about every season and Tyler Oakley and his best friend Corey are on this season and so I picked it up for that and I was not disappointed in the least and um, for those of you who haven't watched you know any of Tyler Oakley's videos definitely check him out he's so funny and he, he's true to who he is and I particularly um the book is his memoir and it's very different than other memoirs I've read yes he has different stories from his life and he picks like random stories they are in chronological order but it's told in Tyler Oakley fashion. This was not written by a ghostwriter. This, I mean, you could really hear his voice and how it comes out. And he says it like it is in true Tyler Oakley fashion. Um, but I recommend the audiobook over the physical book for two reasons. A, Tyler reads it, which I feel like just adds so much more to it, especially the humor moments. And um, he, like, at one point he lists, his top 10 Disney princes and what he would I think it's like the 20 things he would do if he was Beyonce for a day and just other stories but when he tells him his vocal inflection you really get like I just think you get something totally extra out of it like it's just extra cherry on top also he adds little snippets like in there that aren't in the actual physical published copy so you get like a little extra um, and I really love that. He just shamelessly self-promote himself, but I mean, I feel like it's his book. He's allowed to do that. Um, but yeah, I gave it five out of five stars. And this was, I can't decide if Queen of Shadows or if this was my favorite book of the month. They were just both fantastic in different ways. Next, I read Seven Brief Lessons in Physics by Carlo Rovi Rovielli. Um, I probably just butchered that, but I gave this a three out of five stars. This is very short. It's um, seven different essays together. Um, you do have to read them in order and it does flow very well. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background. I've had physics one and two at the university level and I have also had um, physical chemistry which involves quantum mechanics and a couple other things I got like snippets of it so I had a decent background going in um, and also I have a decent like I guess knowledge base of the space-time continuum and like the Big Bang Theory and all of that going in so I'm coming from a place I guess knowledgeable in the subjects um, and I really enjoy this and I would have rated it higher except I think that if you don't have a basic understanding I'm not saying the understanding I have but I mean if you don't understand basic basic concepts I don't think you will fully understand what he's talking about that being said I still highly recommend reading it because more so than the physics itself and the science itself it's very well written it's almost lyrical in a sense of the way he writes it. I really enjoy the writing style. But he really shows how complex, magical, and simple science is all at the same time. Um, he also shows the competitive side of science and the fact that it is always evolving and the he talks a little bit about some of the past science controversies um, that were controversial within the scientific community, not necessarily the world outside. Um, and he explains it very well and he really ties in the science to our everyday lives. So if you don't understand everything he talks about in principle, I still think you get something from it because he shows how it's tied into um, just different things you do in life. My favorite section was when he was talking about like space and time. Um, he goes over a little bit of the Big Bang Theory, not too much in depth, but I, I really liked how he explained it. And I liked his um, explanation of time and how it passes faster 
the higher up you are, um, like feet wise. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and he also, I mean, like I said, I have like a decent background. I mean, I'm by all means, I'm not a physicist. I will never be a physicist. Um, and it's the one subject of the like hard sciences that I don't particularly enjoy. Um, but I've, I had had a basic understanding of all seven of the topics he talks about. However, there were still things that I didn't know and I found fascinating and I never thought of in a way. So I recommend reading it if you're looking for a nonfiction work, especially if you want something in science and you're not necessarily a sciencey person, um, but you really like reading. I think you might enjoy this or at least walk away feeling like you gained a little bit of knowledge. It's very short. It may be take you two and a half hours to read at most. I mean, I think I did it in about two and I'm not the fastest reader. Um, so yeah, and the cover is stunning. I wish I had a physical copy. This is one that like if one of my family members bought it for me for like a birthday or Christmas, I would love to have it just because I enjoyed it that much. Like enjoyment level for me, it was like a four star book. But like I said, I did take it down to three stars because I do think that if you're going to write a science book and they're publishing it toward the masses, like they're not publishing this book for people who study it or for people who are interested in it. I mean, they really marketed this toward your typical reader, not your typical science geek. Um, that's kind of the reason I guess I was slightly critical of it. Um, also, I finished the month today um, by finishing The Horse and the Boy um, by C.S. Lewis. And this takes place right after The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I, I think it takes place within like a couple of months. And the four main characters from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe are in here, but they are not the main focus of the book. They're actually side characters. This one, okay, so the beginning I was really hooked. Then I think it was like a third of the way through up until about slightly over the halfway point. It was just dragging on. I put it down. I was bored. Once I got past this little boring spell, which is about slightly over halfway through the book, I couldn't put it down. Absolutely loved it. Um, and for that reason, I gave it a three out of five stars. If I was to base it on like the last half alone, it would be probably 4.5 stars. Um, really like this. I like the character development, the action. There's some plot twists in this that I didn't quite see coming. One that was somewhat obvious, but like, I think like it was meant to be obvious. Um, and it also, there is a comedic scene at the end. I won't like spell it out for those of you who haven't read it, but I just thought the irony of it was just, it just made my day. It like was the best thing of my Saturday, which sounds a little lame, but, um, we're in the middle of like preparing for finals and last exams. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my little rambly, uh, April wrap up and I hope you guys had a good April and I'm interested to hear what you read and what you liked and I will see y'all later. Bye.